Hello and welcome to a Tabletop Bellhop Cardboard Coat Check. I am Mo Tuzno, the Tabletop Bellhop, your Cardboard Concierge, answering your gaming and game night questions and striving to make everyone's gaming experience better. Right now, the question I am going to be answering is, what's in the box in regards to this very shiny UV-coated white box with Disney characters on it from Spin Master? This is a copy of Disney's Sidekicks, and I do have to thank Spin Master for sending us a copy of this game to check out. This is a cooperative Disney-themed game from famed game designer Eric M. Lang, who is someone I am a big fanboy of, so I am really looking forward to checking this game out. Now, in Sidekicks, time to kick it into hero mode. Treacherous Disney villains have teamed up and captured your favorite Disney heroes. And they have plenty of tricks up their sleeves to help them defend the castle where the heroes are locked up. As crafty and courageous Disney sidekicks, you work together to rescue the heroes and defeat at least one of the villains. Rescue villagers to unlock additional powers. You're gonna need them. This looks like a really sweet two or sorry, cooperative board game featuring some really cool looking miniatures. You're going to power up your sidekick, you're going to take down the castle, you're going to rescue the heroes and defeat the villains. So let's take a look at what you get inside the box for Disney Sidekicks from Spin Master Games. So here you have the box for Sidekicks. It is worth noting that when you purchase this game, it does not come with shrink wrap, but rather just taped edges. So I have cut the tape on these, but I have yet to open up this copy. You get to see what's inside here at the same time I do. Right on top, we of course have a rule book, which is the size of the box. And I gotta say, that's like the biggest, here's a shot of what the board looks like I think I've seen in a game in a long time. Uh, you've got the intro on the side, which is actually longer than what I just read off the back of the box. I do apologize for some glare here. Uh, we have a very detailed look at the components. I always appreciate when a game does this, especially when they show you both sides of the cards, uh, showing you all the various different components and all the different tokens we're about to see. Then we have how to set up. This is nice, a one-page summary of how to set up the game. And then we get into the actual gameplay rules. Tons of examples. I think there's more example text here than game text, which is good to see. It looks like there's three different steps to each during the danger phase. So it's going to be one of those cooperative games where you do a danger phase, then the heroes take their actions. Then we get into the action phase where heroes can move, attack, unlock, rescue, or rest. Looks like there's going to be some pretty simple symbols to use to control your heroes. We are looking at a total of 11 pages. And interestingly, there are packs. Add one or more included grave danger packs to make the game more difficult. So there are some additional packs you can kind of unlock as you play, adding a slight legacy element. That sounds really cool. So the game ends. The sidekicks win if all of the heroes are rescued and at least one villain is destroyed. The villains win if a sidekick's health is depleted, a sidekick, so any of them. All five castle towers are filled with guards and or villagers, or a third bridge is destroyed, or a villain loss condition is met. Uh, we also have the game board side, so it's showing the two different sides of the board. And how to tell the difference between if you're playing two to three players or four players. It looks like this game is a maximum of four players. And you have a nice, very detailed, not detailed, but a very clear summary of a turn on the back here. That's also always appreciated. Now, I doubt this entire board is going to fit on my camera. But we'll show it. Uh, nice touch. I have not seen a glossy board like this since buying a mass market game. It's a very mass market feel to this. Like, you know, your monopolies or whatever. Colorful, detailed. Looks very clear, nothing you need to read on the board, so it's language independent. There are some icons at various spots that look seasonal, or like there's winter, spring, summer, fall we seem to have on this board. And we have the other player side, which is the two to three player, which just has less spots on the board. So nice two-sided board. We have a bag containing the punch boards, which is a little different than I'm used to. This, I'm going to cut open. Okay, so I, maybe I'm not. No, I better, because you can't really read what that shows. So I will note that these are so well punched that these little stars are falling out. Just inside the bag here. 
So I'm just going to shake this a bit and try to get them all to fall to the bottom. <laughs> So here you have a single punch board. Again, I apologize for the white. Why is my, my camera is really not liking white today. I apologize. So I am gonna grab, I think we have Bell here. So here you can see the Bell artwork, the thickness of the tile, which is pretty standard, two-sided. Uh, we have a close-up of her head versus more of a upper body shot. I don't know if there's a difference from these two sides. And then all kinds of little tiny tokens here. Now, before I lose any of these, I'm just going to push this off to the side so we can look at the rest. But yeah, I have stuff is just popping off of this. So we're going to put that to the side. Next, we have character cards. Again, this is sealed, so you are going to need some way to open these up. Oh, what a weird consistency. Okay, I'm going to use a non-yellow card so you can see it. So we have Abu from Aladdin. This is like plastic. It's also coated kind of a UV, not UV. How would you describe that? It's the linen finish. It's got the linen finish. So next we have one of the character cards. There's obviously a health tracker at the bottom, probably a number of actions, and then a special ability. Abu, of course, is the hairy little thief. Which says, when you draw a danger card, you can discard it to draw a new danger card, which cannot be discarded. You can also spend magic to do so when another sidekick draws a danger card. So these are uh, two-sided, but there's only actual rule information on the one side. I don't know if this, this back with the symbol of Abu matters at all. So the characters we get are Abu. We have the, the fairy godmothers, or the step, the, the, yes, uh, Flora, Fauna, and Meriwether. We have Timon and Pumbaa. We have Tinkerbell which someone will argue is not a sidekick. Uh, and then we have, that's it for the, oh, and we have Lumiere. Then we have cards for the villains. We have Maleficent, who also has a health track and some kind of special abilities. We have Scar. We have Gaston. We have Jafar. And we have Captain Hook. Uh, these would obviously get stored here, and interestingly, the it's designed so that snaps in. So I don't know if you can see it, but there are actually snaps here to stop anything from under those cards popping out, which is a nice touch. So I'm going to pop those out. And again, these cards are, are thin, but plasticky. Like, I think they're way more durable than they feel, but they do feel flimsy and thin. Next, we have a large deck of cards. All right, so we have a large deck of cards, which I'm going to start going through to see what we got. All right, that one just says Disney Sidekicks. Then we have summary cards. So these show you what the sidekick roles mean. R-O-L-L-S, which there is a die. And there is a whole turn summary on here. Okay, interesting. It looked like it was a four-player game, but I have five of those. Two to four players. So I don't know why there's five summary cards. Anyway, five summary cards, sidekick cards. Let's actually move some of this out of the way. Again, I can't. I want to just toss this bag, but I don't want to lose these. Okay, put those aside. Then we have cards, obviously, for each of the different sidekicks. So we have Tinkerbell's cards. Hot Temper, Fast Flight, Believe in Fairies, and so on. All each of the cards has unique Tinkerbell artwork, which is awesome to see. I'm always disappointed when um, board game versions of well-known licenses don't use art on all their cards. Then we have the Timon and Pumbaa deck, which we're just going to show off quickly. Lumiere deck. Fairy Godmother deck. Abu. And we have a ton of these, which is probably the, the villain action deck. So this is the, the stuff's going to happen, which it looks very boring. What I was just saying about complaining about not using artwork. Oh, at least some of them have artwork. 
So we have a bunch of text. All right, we do it. We do have some artwork as well. I was about to say if these were all just text. Come on, it's Disney. So they're showing various villain attack cards. I'm just gonna flip these now. Um, some obviously have gold and green. Oh, we're color coded again. So let's. These are all one type of card that are blue and black that all look like villagers in peril, guards on patrol. So it just happened I grabbed the two cards with the least art first. I get it. Sometimes the rules take precedence. So we have a whole bunch of those. But then we have color-coded ones here that appear to be based on the different villains, which makes sense. So we have cards for each of the villains, displacement plans, and so on. We're just going to flip through these quickly. Here's some of Hook's cards. Jafar's cards, Maleficent's cards, and Scar's cards. Card quality, again, is um, feels flimsy, but they're, like, plasticized. Like, I don't think I could rip this if I tried, but I'm not going to try. Toss all this back in the box. So there is a spot down here under the cards to hold all these tokens, which I'm going to grab the few that fell out. And put them in there now before I lose them. I would almost be tempted to make you sit and watch me punch all this, but no one wants to do that. So spots put tokens, cards go on top, and then locked in by these larger player cards. You can actually see it locked in. We do have a die. Interesting. So we have a die with various symbols on it. Thumbs up. Thumbs up with a scratch. Stars or magic, I'm guessing. Just a scratch. Then we have another thumbs up and a thumbs up and a scratch. So two times thumbs up and a scratch. Two, one times thumbs up, one times scratch, two times thumbs up, two times thumbs up, and magic. So we have a six-sided die. Uh, it is worth noting this is not etched. So there is a chance that if we play this game enough, they might rub off, though I don't know how likely that actually is. Games take a lot of play for that. Then we have what I assume are the walls over here. The bridges. They talked about bridges. Yes, these are definitely bridges. We have a bunch of bridges that have kind of fallen out of my version here. It looks like they probably fit way better if I, I just organize them. So we have little plastic bridges. That as a, is a miniature gamer, I'm, I kind of dig. You can tell they have little cobblestones on them and stuff. They're actually rather nice. Then we have the castle. Which you're going to assemble somehow. There we go. Nice and easy. Does it snap? I don't know if I want to snap it. There you go. And you're going to build your castle for the center of the board. Nice 3D piece. I'm not going to build the whole thing. There's obviously room for things, standees or something to go on top of it, or symbols to go on top of it. Castle. How easy to take apart. Easy to take apart. It's good to see. I just have to figure out where I need to pull. Then we have minis. So I am going to do the best I can to show these off. Uh, but first... No, nothing underneath. Always worth checking. So it looks like they're, they're color-coded, right? So you have... Tinkerbell, and I gotta say, that is a pretty cool Tinkerbell miniature. Tinkerbell. And then we have Captain Hook. Oh, that's even cooler in my opinion. Again, the yellow doesn't pick up too well. Now, one thing I will say, I'm pretty sure there's a scale issue there. Tinkerbell and Captain Hook. Then we have Scar and Timon and Pumbaa. You can see Scar there. Uh, unfortunately, my camera's not picking up the details because these are such pastel colors and they're they're very reflective, shiny. The plastic's fairly solid. Um, I would say like better than Army Men, but not at resin miniature level. Then we have Lumiere and Gaston. Again, scale is a bit of an issue here, but you can kind of see those two. I don't know if color matters, but I will say that I, yes. I will say the, the green and the yellow are very similar. Then we have Jafar and Abu. Jafar mini is pretty sweet. And Abu with a giant cutlass or so. And then, oh, interestingly, the fairy godmothers are actually individual little miniatures. 
That's pretty awesome. You can see the three fairy godmothers here. And of course, Maleficent, the most well-known villain of all. That's it. I gotta say, I'm very intrigued by what I'm seeing in this box. Uh, there's a lot of the, all these tokens. There's a surprising number of these tokens. So now that I've, I've got it out, you can see this a little better. I've reduced the glare a bit. So you have all kinds of tokens. There's all kinds of Lumiere. Oh, <laughs> but then you have like the, the Fausas. The Fausas, Fausas. I'm not sure how that's pronounced. The, the, the Fausas. You have like cook ships. So there's obviously some interesting things. All kind of grinning Gastons here. And these are, I didn't want to flip it over, mostly two-sided, except for these ones have some text on the back. And some have locks. So I have to assume every villain probably plays differently. And I don't know if you fight... I, I'm going to go to a win, right? This is conjecture. Is that... I have a feeling it's going to be like this, it, like um, Universal Monsters Horrified, where you're going to pick how many villains you want to fight against. But I don't know if that's necessarily true. That's conjecture. Not confirmed. Looks good. Um, Eric Lang is a fantastic game designer, well known for many popular mm -hmm. miniature based games. I am really looking forward to see what Mr. Lang has done with Disney. So there you have it. What you get inside the box for Disney Sidekicks, a new cooperative board game from Eric M. Lang, published by Spin Master Games. I am really looking forward to getting this to the table. I think it looks fantastic. There's Component quality was excellent. Uh, lots of interesting cards using lots of great Disney artwork and some really cool miniatures. My kids are going to love these miniatures. So I am really looking forward to checking out Disney Sidekicks from Eric Lang. It looks fantastic. Of course, I will be sharing my plays with everyone on my social media feeds where you can find me, Tabletop Bellhop. One word, pretty much everywhere online. Eventually to post a full review on the blog at TabletopBellhop.com as well as on our podcast, the Tabletop Bellhop Gaming Podcast, which you can find on your podcatcher of choice or Apple Podcasts, iTunes, whatever they call it now, Spotify, and pretty much anywhere podcasts can be found. If you dig this video and our other content, it would also be awesome if you headed to patreon.com slash tabletop bellhop and consider tipping your bellhop. That's it for me today and our look at Disney Sidekicks' time to kick it into hero mode. Good night and game on.